Right then guys, welcome to another episode of Hooked. My name's John Murray and I'm an angling addict and today I'm down at the railway pond. I'm actually joined today by Scott Precious from Fishing Adventures Channel. Uh, we're going to have a bit of a knock up today, a uh, little bit of a head to head, Caden style. So I've got a shiny pound for him and I'm just wondering whether he can take it off me. Scott, have you brought your pound? I have mate, here it is. It's uh, fresh off the press. I, I, well, I minted it at home this morning to be fair, but if you can take it, I'll be surprised. I'm going to smash you right up today, mate. Absolutely smash well, you that's right a bit up. Of, that's a bit of fighting talk right there, folks. So Scott's a great angler. Um, he's definitely got a little bit of home advantage here. He's fished it a couple of times, but we have got another young angler with us today called Adam Stone. I don't know whether Adam wants to come in and have a word with us, but uh, he's probably the local venue expert. Hi, Adam. You all right? Just standing right. here. So... You're the man. You're the man of the moment, Adam. Um, yeah. What's the method to go with here? Because I need some. I need some tips to beat Scott and take that pound. You do. Right. So you want to be just fishing pearl and natural baits mainly. Um, that seems to be the best way forward. Happy days. So there you heard it, folks. If we uh, see anything else happen today, I think somebody might be on the pellet. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens there. Anyway, we'll get right to it. So we'll get some fishing done. And that's all coming right up, straight after this. Right, today's ground bait mix is going to be one part Census Perch 3000, one part Gudgeon Black 3000. I'm just going to add some Terre de Somme to it, uh, one part of that, so equal thirds of everything, just to keep the food content down because I've no idea how to fish this place. So this is going to be my choppy mix. I have got some sweet F1 with me, just in case any bream or roach come on the feed. So I'm just going to put one part perch in there, measure out one part Gudgeon. We're going to mix that together, let it settle, and then we'll add our soil afterwards. Right, that's probably a little bit over wet at the moment, but it'll soon soak it up. And when we add the soil in, it'll probably dry it out a little bit, so uh, I want it quite heavy. Obviously, we've got some chopped worm to go in that, so it'll dampen it down again, so we just need to be a little bit careful. But that's probably going to be pretty close. Right, I'm just going to add the tear de Somme to the mix, just run that through the riddle to start with, break any lumps out, um, and then we'll just blend that, blend that together and then we'll run it all through the riddle again and that should be ready to go, so we'll just mix that in, and there's a very heavy mix now, so, just reducing the food content as well, so whilst it's heavy, Brought that food content down a bit. It's a lovely mix. Just, just binds together nicely. Breaks back down into dust. Right, I'm just going to start with a bit of initial feed. A bit of a choppy mix. I'm going to chop everything up here. Red maggots, pinkies, worms and a bit of castor. I'm going to cup this in on my deeper line to the right hand side. Lilies. Not set a rig up for the left hand line yet, which I think I'm just going to loose feed hemp and pinky over the top to start with, and then try and catch on either caster later in the day or potentially big red maggot. But it'll definitely just be loose fed with hemp and just a little bit of live bait to start with. And that's a lovely mush to start with. Right, I'm just popping that feed in. a bit of chopped up worm, maggot, caster. So I'm going to put that out with 13 metres on my right hand side. So rig on the 13 metre line is a Allen Scott on SF1 0.5 gram and that's just shotted, strung out shots down the line for the time being uh, and got that down to a size 20 red maggot hook to fish the worm on. 
Just going to start on a red maggot to start with though. See if we can get a bite. Alright, nothing on the maggot so far. So I'll just try a tiny bit of worm. Just going to add a touch of bristle grease to my pole tip. Just not not that visible. Probably only got about 5mm visible at the minute. Might have to take some shot off. Just trim it down again. We'll start thinking about feeding the uh, left hand line. I'm just going to pop a bit of grease on that. I think this pond's been fishing notoriously hard the last few weeks. There's really only been perch showing, which is uh, why I opted to target them. But there is a bit of everything in here, I think, including carp, tench, roach, bream. But my main plan of attack today was to go after the perch. I'm not knowing the venue. I don't know if I'm fishing the right length line or not, but close in it's very shallow, certainly in this peg. I think the, the depths vary wildly from peg to peg. And bristle grease is just helping out nicely on that pole tip now. So it's a sensitive rig. I've probably got about an inch of tip showing so I can read the bite easily on a piece of worm. So far, no sign of anything. No bite whatsoever. It's going to be difficult to gauge feeding the left hand line with loose feed, which is why I'm opting to feed mainly hemp. Scott's into one. That's a bite now. <laughs> Got three of the snag. Drops in. And it buried straight away on the worm. So that's more positive. And that's a perch. Lovely. So we've got our first railway fish. Let's lay back in there. See if we can get another. If the hemp and firing pinky over the top or maggot over the top don't work, I'll uh, convert that into a worm line as well so I can rotate the lines. It is a little bit difficult to feed that line by catapult at the moment, but yeah, that's another fish. a bit snaggy out there. Just gonna have to hang off to the left hand side of these lilies a little bit. A lot of twigs and the likes. There's a dip on the float. Scott's got another. Something just messing around with a worm here. Might just be a little bit long this section. That's going though. I'm gonna hit it. Uh, missed it. It's going halfway down. Okay, let's try a pinky. I'll just feed the line off to my left while we're doing that. So I'll go back out. Wind's getting up a bit. I think I'm going to feed it with caster. Going in with the pinky. So I'm fishing this rig strung through at the moment. If we don't get bites on the drop, then I'm probably just going to bulk this now. And then we can always string it back out later in the day if the fish do start coming up. There was a few fish topping to start with. That's a fairly instant bite on pinky though. So there's definitely fish there willing to willing to feed. We'll just watch this down on a tight line. See if anything grabs it as it drops through. No, so the fish are a little bit lower in the water at the moment. Biting quite tentatively, but that's gone. Ah, it's dropped off. So back in on the pinky, and that's gone, that's buried. Although I'm bumped off, 
It's gone again. Right, fish on. Let's go a bit steady with this one. Come here. Never even mark that pinky. Just go straight back out on it. I think the way this is going, I might just convert the left hand line to another perch line. Give myself options. Well, just two lines fish the same. Don't know about fishing the hemp. If there's no roach knocking about, it's probably pointless. I'm just going to fish a ball out and top up as and when needed. They're absolutely buried then. Something's got that. Yeah, another one up. Another perch. So they're definitely having the pinky. Question is, what do I do with the left hand line? Will I continue to lose feed it? Emp and caster, emp and maggot, I don't know. Or do I convert it into another perch line? Slightly lighter rig for that, it is a little bit shallower over there, but it does slope as it comes towards me. Um, so I've gone with a 0.4 gram on that one. This 0.5 feels about right for this depth of water and that's gone already. It feels an half decent fish this, I'm just not going to rush this one. That's a skimmer. Nice. Nice little skimmer. I'm going to get a bit of bait going in on this line, just to uh, make sure something's there before I contemplate putting any ground bait on it. That's another fish on the pole. Another small perch. The little pink is working well. I know Adam tends to fish the pinky a lot. Um, he kind of swears by it. And it's a great bait. You know, fluoro pinkies, they'll take anything. Caught some big bream on fluoro pinkies over years. We're just settling into this session now. Trying to find a rhythm. Try and figure out exactly how to feed this peg. See how much bait we can get down. I don't want to kill it. So while we're catching, just want to fish this ball out for now. We'll see how this right hand swim reacts. And then have a think about what I'm going to do with the left hand swim. There's another fish on. So far the perch plan's working. It's another one and he's off in my lap. Looks like Adam's got a sprinkle pot on. Yeah, and he's getting a few next to the lilies there. Well, if this line's just slowing down a little bit. I'm just gonna assess this Nah, uh, still fish there. Don't want to overfeed it, I just want to keep the bites coming. I'm thinking about putting a bit more top up on it. Still there. Uh, that feels more bream like maybe. I think it's a perch. Let's go steady with it.
Oh no. That is a lovely roach. That's a beautiful autumn roach. Beauty. I'm going to keep everything tight on this line with the cup. Just loose feed the one to my left. If the sun gets off it, that'll be all right. It's a little bit difficult to fish over there at the moment anyway. A bit bright in my eyes. I forgot my sunglasses today. We'll just get prime in it. Don't want to put too much feed on it because um, they may not be taking that much loose feed. Certainly the bites aren't super quick over the ground baited line here. But they're coming frequently enough for winter fishing. So I think hemp on the left is a safe bet to feed until I've actually fed it and assessed how it's working. Right, I'm just going to try and nip a worm again. They're using big worms here. Don't think they want a big bait. If you stick with the worm, you can probably get a bigger hook on. An 18s. Maybe even a 16 if you could fish a bigger piece of worm. At the moment, I'm just fishing a 20. Dropped a couple of fish at the start. But, um, I seem to be keeping hold of them now. Going a bit steadier when I first hit it into one before I ship it back, make sure it's on. Well, bite's either slow on the worm, we're hooked up on something, or it's going slow on everything at the moment. I may have to try the pinky again just to make sure it's not the worm that's causing issue, but we were getting bites on the worm to start with, so I'm just going to relay the rigging with the worm for now, see if it goes. Just making sure I'm clear out there, just a little bit worried about how snaggy it is. Yeah, it's gone. Fish on the worm. That was a fairly decent one as well. Trying to get into the reeds. But we're not going to let that happen. That's another roach on worm. So he definitely fancied a bit of that. What a nice fish. I think I'm just going to risk a top up ball. There's roach down there. Pop a bit of emping on the deck as well. And a nice little ball of black. Reminds me a little bit of PKD, this stuff. Uh, with the gudgeon in it. A lovely sort of aniseedy smell. I'll pop this ball in and then I'll uh, cook some emp over the top of that. Go back out with the worm. That's buried. Quality on the worm feels better than on the pinky. This could be another good roach. Definitely tugging a bit. That's another skimmer, I think. That's another Brucey bonus. So, topping up, 
has definitely uh, brought us some fish there. Tent, tent knocked him on the head at all. Sometimes you come to a new venue, you can overcomplicate things. So I'm just picking this single line for the time being. Seems to be working quite nicely for me. Obviously, just feeding that backup line. Um, the way it's going, though, I'm tempted to put some ground bait on it. You never know. If I feed it for hemp and with hemp and caster. It could become a nice roach line a bit later in the day. I've got a few tears with me. So we'll just see. Well, that's another fish. It's starting to queue up. perch. Worm's certainly working right now. Scott's got another. Don't know if he's been catching consistently. I haven't seen him catching that much recently. I'm trying to keep half an eye on him but he's got a good view of me when I'm fishing away from him. He's fishing towards me. If I switch onto the other line I'll uh, be able to keep my eye on him better. I don't want to come off this line right now. These small fish just start speeding up. I'm, uh, I'm not too worried if they drop off. I'd just rather get in and out quickly with them. I want that pound. Just watching the end of Adam's pool. Just trying to see what he's doing. He's fishing tight at Lily's. Can't see him feeding a great deal. He has got a sprinkle pot on. That's a bite developing on worm now. That's gone lovely. Oh, that was a proper bite. It just looked classic bream bite. It might be a bream, I don't know. When I hit into it, it felt good. It doesn't feel quite so good now. Mm, not a bad fish though, I don't think. Yeah, decent perch this one. Alright, well the worm seems to be working quite nicely at the moment. Topping up with feed certainly ain't done it any harm. I'm thinking about cupping out onto that far line with two or three balls of ground bait, priming it up with hemp and caster, just keeping a little bit of loose feed going back over the top. Oh, that's gone, that's a lovely bite again. Decent fish these on the worm. Well, this one Could be another skimmer. Glare on the water is making it awkward. Yeah, that's another skimmer. So, if we can keep these coming. Get a decent weight today. That blustery wind's a bit of a nightmare, but we're into another fish. Just managed to hold on to the pole long enough before it got swayed out. Ah, we dropped it. The sun is 
glorious today. I've dropped him again. Right, mix him up carefully. Getting a funny couple of bites there. Did drop a couple of fish, so probably didn't do it any favours. Just go back on the pinky for the time being. Well, the swim had gone just a little bit quiet there. I don't know whether this is another decent bream. Just going steady back with this one. Say a bream, skimmer. Taking it on the pinky, so they're pretty much eating most things at the moment. Thought I'd just swap off the uh, worm. That is another lovely golden skimmer. Nice little weight building fish, these. I was just thinking about moving on to the uh, caster line over here, doing a, bit, doing a bit of a recce on it, deciding exactly what I'm going to do with it. I think I'll just put a bit more bait on it. Just keep priming it for now. Oh, that's gone. This is a decent fish. I'm a little bit concerned he's trying to get in those lilies here. Let's try and get off the top two now and get get a bit of tension on this. I'm not entirely sure what it is. Ah, there we go. It's a quality roach. Beautiful. That was going really well. So many willow blades in here. What a gorgeous fish that is. Stunning. That's gone, yeah, another fish on. Another skimmer. Well, I've got to say, I wasn't expecting it to be quite this good. This is uh, turning out to be a much better day than what recent weights in the uh, Winter League matches have suggested. Let's go back on the worm. I may top this up and then just have a look on the other line, but I don't know, it's hard to come off something when you're catching. If you're catching fish, stay with it. Bite developing, that's gone. We're into another one. Just a perch. That was on the worm. Go well back out on that piece of worm and uh, see if there's still skimmers there. Or whether they're preferring the pinky now. The surface of this pond is absolutely covered in willow blades. So far I'm getting through them okay, occasionally get one on the hook, or you don't get through, but most of the time the rig's getting down. Wind is definitely swirling about but I'm quite sheltered in this corner, 
Just grabs the end of the pole from time to time. Oh, that's gone. I went on the drop. It's only a perch again, though. Yes, come off. Right. I'll just drop back on the pinky. I think sometimes they just suck at the end of the worm and you don't quite hook them right. Yeah, that's gone. Another perch. So, is that a sign to top up? Try and get some more skimmers in. Let's put another ball on it. So again, just a small handful of the feed. Put that into a nice ball. Bang on. Right, I just had a little bit of lunch. Um, I think I'm just going to have a look on this caster line before I go back on over the ground bait ball that we put out. Just see if anything's doing. If not, I may put some ground bait on this line now. Just want to see if we can catch on the caster. Fed enough of it now for probably best part of a couple of hours. Need to try and assess it now because we've probably only got three hours left to go. So I need to let me mind up what I am actually going to do with this line, whether it's worth pursuing at all. I think the fact that we've managed to catch so well to start with on the worm, the pinky and the worm and the ground bait. Um, Suggesting really that I don't need to bother too much with this. Um, I've got a caster on there and a fish straight away, but I think it's a perch. Couldn't quite see for the sun, yeah, it's another perch, so we're not exactly uh, creating a roach line here. We'll give it another pup. So, yeah, rig wise, it's exactly the same as the other SF. Apart from this version, it's just the 0.4 gram. So, slightly lighter, so slightly less depth of water. We've probably got about four to five foot, and uh, just got number eight strung out in the last half of that rig. So, over the last two and a half foot. Good space them out evenly. I'll just try and drop it through. Quite a slow fall on it anyway, so I'll space them, it'll be a really slow fall. Probably do with a slightly darker tip on on this. That's gone straight away. Another one on caster. Not a bad perch though. Another fish on my caster. I'd love to get the roach to switch on. Obviously, some nice ones in here. And that is a roach. Ooh, it's probably a little bit big for the net as well. Uh, a little bit big to swing that. So, yeah, nice roach. So, maybe the first two perch weren't the way to go. Let's just stick with this for now because we're catching quite fast. Keep that feed going in now. Clearly a lot of fish willing to feed out there. Definitely do to change the tip colour though. The orange on this side is a bit of a nightmare. I think yellow will work best. This is a patch of light water and uh, and a patch of dark. Oh, 
Right. A lot of leap over on that line. It's causing a few issues, but I think we'll just swap the tips off and see it easier. It's the beauty of these uh, Drenham floats. Dead easy to swap them out. Problem is, when you've got so many, it's just finding the right size one amongst all the uh, other rubbish that I've got in my box. So, I'm just going to go with the bright yellow. Right, here we go. Let's see how that yellow tip looks. It's certainly better in the darker water. That's a bite. I don't feel a very good fish. Well, I didn't to start with anyway. And now I've woken up a bit. <laughs> Yeah, that's another roach. Oh, I love catching roach, especially in autumn. Beautiful autumn roach. Maybe loose feeding caster is the way. Still not going to neglect the other line though, because I think the bream definitely, well, the skimmers definitely like the worm. But to be honest, these roach are probably as good quality as those skimmers in terms of weight. God, it's a nightmare trying to see anything out there. There's so many leaves blowing in this corner. I think I might have to fish into this white water where it's just a little bit clearer and um, put the black tip on. Probably gonna have to swap out again. That's gone again. That's another fish. This is another roach. I'll probably just give this some ammo now. Again, feels a decent fish. Swimming around, yeah. That's another beautiful redfin. They're having it. I'm just going to change that tip out for a black one now. Difficult to know what to go with at times. Okay. Black tip on. Yeah, a few casters in over the top. It's almost impossible to see the black as well. A very narrow band of white water out there. It's perfect in it. But everything's blowing around. Just gonna have to try and keep it still in there. It's like a soup of leaves out there. Yeah, this is trouble, this is trouble. Wind's really howling in from the left now and it's just oh, they're just swirling they're just congregating in my swim just can't see what's going on right I'm going to come off this line go back on the ground bit line while all that leaf material's floating around in there but we'll keep it we'll keep it fed there's clearly some nice roach to be had on that that rig. Go back on the worm on the half a grammar. A little bit clearer off to my right. Looks like Scott's fishing the tip, looking for a donkey. That's a bite. Oh yes, that feels like an half decent fish. Oh yeah, that feels like a really good fish. Hey up. Yeah, it could be a decent bream this. Ah. Oh. And that was a cap. Mind you, I think it was a bream. It's just snot up the line. So maybe we should up the hook size now, just to get a bit more holding power. We're certainly not struggling for bites. So I think I'm going to take this 20 off, get up to an 18. At least we know if we're just fishing worm on this line, we can bury it in it. Could even do that on the caster line, to be fair. So not not nine bottom, to a size 18. Line to my left, just, it's got so much leaf on it now, it just looks completely unfishable. Um, hopefully, it'll move shortly. These light conditions just keep changing, causing all sorts of trouble with float colours. Glare coming back off the water now is uh, is really bad. I don't know what the camera looks like. It's low winter sun, it's bouncing back up at my face. 
straight in my eyeballs and then got my shades. Is there another fish waiting for us down here? It seems to have definitely slowed off a bit this line with the ground bait on. But is that because there's bigger fishing? Just not getting a bite right now. I'll just lift this up and lay it back in. Yeah, this line seems to have gone a bit quiet. Certainly got bait on, so I'm not sure why we're not getting a bite on the worm again. Let's go back on the pinky. Now we've put a bit of caster on this line, so I'll try caster on this line. I'm just looking at the left-hand line, thinking, can I get in on it? Sort of a hollow developed between the leaves. Still plenty of leaf there, but I might just be able to lower the rig in. Can't afford not to be catching for too long. We'll try caster on the uh, worm line. So we put a little bit of everything on it this morning. That's gone. So I'll fish on the caster over the worm line. Just can't see what's going on. That's a skimmer. So we've still got bream down there. Excellent news. I think the worm in the ground bit definitely brought the bream in. I think if we could fish on that left hand line we could probably catch roach faster than we're catching on this right hand line. Just on the loose fed caster. Because it's nice and warm. They've probably switched on to caster now. Wind turns. First it's blowing right, then it's blowing left. And it just gets up ahead of steam. It's really difficult to hold the pole in position. It comes out of nowhere. So no bite on cast of this. Oh, fish on. That fish must have been holding that. I could not see the bite. Feels a fairly decent fish again. Just trying to get him out of the swim. Another skimmer. What's the same? <laughs> See, you want to fish for life now. <laughs> Ask your dad for a rod. <laughs> so this right line is definitely so it develops into the bream line. Left line, I think, is my roach line. If I could get on it. This float's getting hard to see now as well. So I don't know whether to... I think I'm going to put a yellow one, actually, because the uh, yellow elastic's quite easy to see out there. Oh. Right, bring that back, because I've just got blown out of position. Change the tip on this float. So about three fifths of the way through now. If we're gonna to top up, I may give it a double feed. And then we'll fish it out. I don't really want to top it up in the last hour, so could probably put two or three balls on it. Let's see if we can really get some bream on this. And uh Try and get on the caster line as well. Just rotate the lines as best we can, depending on whether we're catching or not. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget, give me a big thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And smash that notification bell so you don't miss an episode every time I upload one. Well, the yellow tip's better out there. But don't seem to be getting a bite on caster right now. Which is a little bit odd. So, I'll bring that in. Right, I'm going to give it a double top up now. Um, maybe even three balls on this. Yeah, probably will. Give it a really good feed, this line. See if we can concentrate those bream.
and try and have a go on the caster line for a little bit. Right, so I'm going in with three balls now. I'll be positive towards the end of today. Might kill it, but hopefully not. It's very difficult to see out on that line now. Can't actually see where I'm feeding properly. Right. Back on the caster line. Oh, that's a dip. Yeah, that's gone. Scott's just had a nice roach by the look of it. Quality one. Yeah, we need to keep them coming. This is a nice fish as well, though. Just trying to get off. Yeah, nice roach. Beautiful. So those roach are sat on the caster. Yeah, these are fabulous fish. Can't fault this fishing. I think we just need to give the caster a bit of ammo. So somehow I've managed to get out there. Got leaves on the hook twice, shipping out. It's too much. Oh, fish. I must have took it on the drop. Laid that in. Couldn't see the float cell, so I picked it up and it was on. Can't, couldn't see because the light was shining on it and all the leaf material in the way. And that's actually a blooming perch. Well, I'll tuck them. There's a bite. Yeah, fish on. Ooh. Strange how sometimes they don't feel that good and then all of a sudden they get a lot better. That's another nice roach. Lovely fishing. They're a proper good stamper, these. Right, there's leaf material just floating around where I want to be. I'm just going to lower in. I'm not even sure that's going to get me through. I think we're in, and it's gone straight away. Ah, bumped it. Can't believe it. Right, better bring that back because that cast might be smashed. okay this leaf is just causing so many issues right now ah there goes a the yuck length I'm getting frustrated with it just need to stay calm and keep it going through new oak length on them Sticking with the size 20 on the caster line. This caster line seems to have just dried up a bit. I'm going to stop feeding it. I'm not sure why. Right. Go back on our bream line while that's happening. Give that a rest. Oh, caster's gone. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll have one more put on the caster line then. Make sure it's not gone completely dead. It's cleared up a little bit as well because the uh, most of the leaf material is now in this corner down to my left. So that's a bonus. Once it fishes clear, I've got way better chance of seeing the bites, and it's not perfect because um, the light's still all over the place. The sun's shining brightly in my eyes. You're probably getting a fair bit of lens flare. 
this wind's definitely banging around a bit. That's gone though. Oh, we missed it. It was a bit rapid that bite. Sort of dipped under and came back up as I struck. So we'll just lower in. Yeah, it's definitely gone a bit slow on this kefta line. There's bites to be had. Scott's just got another netter. Will this match is far from over. Oh my word. Sun shining this peg now is horrendous. Nah, no, the yellow sits no good anymore. Visibility problems today. So now there's a ripple on coming at me. The sun's battering off the water and we can't see anything. That's gone. We're in. Oh it's a good fish. Oh it's pulling like mad. It's really took some elastic. Trying to get in those lilies. Just let the elastic do the work. I think we've actually managed to get hold of it. Yeah, decent fish. Might be a big perch this. No, it's not a perch, it's a skimmer. Not a bad one. Probably the best one of the day. Somewhere amongst all that leaf is my fish. It's probably not that much better. He's, a, he's not a bad size, but for some strange reason he properly took off. He's up properly. So cast are producing on both lines now. And pretty much every leaf in the pond is now right in front of me. Look at the state of that. It's horrendous. Incredibly difficult to see the float. The glare and the wind and the ripple just make invisibility dreadful. The bonus is it's blown all the leaf out of my way. Light levels are just appalling, they just keep changing every two seconds. One minute you can see the float, well, you can't really see it, but you can see it, just about see it, and then uh, the next you can't at all. And you know, you'd have to switch from a, a black tip to an orange tip to a yellow tip. It's just it's horrendous. We've had a bite there and not even being able to see it. I'm going to move off to my left, I think it's a Maybe a little bit easier to see the float right now. Um, whether we can get anything out on it, I don't know. Fish on. Couldn't see the bite because there was so much leaf blew over the top of it. You can barely see the elastic out there. But it is out. Very bad light levels now. Yeah, it's another lovely roach. Beautiful fish. Struggling with all this leaf matter. That is a clonking fish. Just trying to present the bait where I can see it, but the leaf material and the wind, it's just making it virtually impossible to spot the float. I've got no idea what's going on out there, and that's a fish on. <laughs> Pretty much fishing blind right now. Well, it's still a nice one. Definitely some decent roach on that left hand side. Cold fish as well, didn't realise how cold they were. Got another fish on. Couldn't see the float so I just struck. 
I'm going to change the tip on this go to a red one. I'm sick of changing them to be quite honest, but needs must. That's a perch. Right guys, we're down to the last hour now. Conditions are getting more and more challenging for me now in this peg. There's just so much leaf in here. I just can barely avoid it on any, either line. Um, so it's definitely causing me issues. It's causing me issues shipping out and picking up leaves, trying to ship out. I'm trying to keep the pole high and not pick them up with the with the rig, but you know, inevitably it happens. So getting a bit frustrated with it now. It does look like it's going to rain a little bit. Um, certainly come over cooler. And uh, this right-hand worm line seems to have slowed right off. Um, not really picking anything up since I put the three balls on it, so maybe that was just too much bait. Uh, the left-hand line is still fishing on caster, but I can only get on it every now and again when the leaves blow back in. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to concentrate for the last hour, try and uh, get out what I can. And I'll see you at the way. Not happy. <laughs> Moment of truth, Scott. I've zeroed him. Oh, man alive. In you go. I don't think there's much in there, but... Not a bad little net, though. It's a nice mixed bag, is that? A nice yeah. mixed bag. Well done, Scott. Nice little tench there as well. Beautiful little tench, that, innit? Yeah. Lovely. Didn't have to wrap as well. Oh. You've gone. 4.11. Happy? 4.11. I'm happy with that. Well done. Yep. Look at that. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Not massive, but. Yeah, about, about, about a pound, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Nice that. fish. Well done, Scott. Nice one. Well Thanks, Glass. Thanks. Well, I'm talking about that. That's 4 pound 11. And I'll get the last fish in. Right, Adam. Right, Let's have your net in. Give you a way. Oh, it looks like you've had a good net, lad. Well done. Cracking net of fish. There's got to be, there's got to be of a ten pound there, mate. No, they roughly were. Yeah. Lovely net of fish from Adam there. Right. Yeah, you can't leave them out. Ooh. Nine pound two. Ooh, well done. Well done, Adam. Nine pound two. Cracking net, mate. Could have weighed fifteen pound of leaves in. <laughs> don't think I've got as much as you, mate. No, I don't think I have. Not feeling it. But it's a nice net anyway. For the first yeah, time here. That. I wasn't expecting that much today. Lovely. Stick her up then, mate. Well, I'll let you read them. Adam's had nine pound two. Nine pound two, nicely oh. done. It's, uh, it's done there, I think. Nine pound. Nine pound five. Get in. <laughs> Very close. Well done, Adam. Well done. Cheers, mate. So there we go. For the pound win. Nine pound. What was it? Nine pound five. 
£9.5. Close result. Right then guys, that's it. That's the end of the match. The head-to-head, -head, uh, me and Scott. So it's been a great little match. Adam's had a fantastic net of fish with £9.2 there. Uh, Scott's had, what was it for Scott, £4? £4.11 I think. £4.11, yeah. so a lovely, another lovely net, he's had a fantastic little tench out there, I mean, bit of a jammy git to be fair, but you know, what can you say? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the bit I'm most looking forward to is getting his shiny pound off him, so uh, come on Scott, hand it over. <laughs> Come on, give me a break. <laughs> well deserved. Well Thank you very deserved. much, sir. You fished your socks off. I shall treasure uh, it. <laughs> it's been a it's been a pleasure to watch you fish. Actually, it's yeah, it's been phenomenal. So well, any, done well. Any time you want another lesson, Scott. Oh, <laughs> That's it. Now we're no longer friends. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. And until the next one, tight lines. See you later. Bye. Bye.